Welcome to Maths with EJD. Today, as you can see, we are going into another dimension as we talk about complex numbers. So I'll be taking you through a very interesting journey with complex numbers. If you remember when I was talking about uh, functions in basic calculus, I talked about uh, the how you can classify numbers into real and complex, you know, so now I have brought to you today this idea. So in this first video, I'll be talking about introduction to complex numbers and we'll dive straight into it. This is what it is going to be like. Uh, you'll have the introduction, the applications of complex numbers, and then we'll reach a conclusion from that. So let's see this. How do you define complex numbers? Complex numbers consists of a real part and an imaginary part typically expressed in the form A plus BI. So you have a real part A. So A represents the real part. B represents the imaginary part. And I is the imaginary unit. Okay? So that's basically what a complex number looks like. You know, normally, uh, you know, for real numbers, all you would have would be A. But now here you have the imaginary parts attached to the imaginary units. So what is that imaginary unit about? That's a very, that's a very, that's a very interesting thing to investigate. Okay. Now you remember, I always give this analogy about, you know, when we're in primary school and, you know, you are told that you could do three minus two, which was, which was one, right? But then whenever you had two minus three, you are told that it was impossible, you know, it was impossible in primary school. And then you get to, uh, you know, this was primary or what some people would call elementary school, right? And then you got to junior high school, junior high school or, you know, junior secondary school, as we call it in Nigeria, you know, uh, and then uh, all of a sudden you'll be told that, oh, you can actually do two minus three because you can think about it in terms of number line where you have the center as zero and you have one, two, three like this and you have minus one, minus two, minus three such that you know two minus three would mean starting from two right move three steps to the back so you have one two three and that was right two minus three would be minus one okay then another way to look at two minus three is you have two and you are owing three if you pay two you are still owing one so owing is minus and then that's one okay so so but then you get to senior secondary school or senior high school that's like grade uh what's that called now i think that should be grade 11 or 12 right that is ss1 or, or so in nigeria and then you're solving quadratic equations and you have something like x squared equals one and then you're told that that is equal to okay something like this you have x squared minus one equals zero and then you can do that as difference of two squares to be x minus one x plus one equals zero and then you have the values to be x equals one or x equals minus one you know if you don't want to do it that way you can also make it like this x squared minus one equals x squared equals one and then you have x squared equals plus or minus square roots of one and that is plus or minus one again all right but then what happens if you have x squared plus one what happens if what you have to contend with now is x squared plus one so x squared plus one equals zero. How do you solve this? You know, that's, it, first of all, you cannot factorize this like we did difference of two squares. So you have x squared equals minus one. That means you have x squared equals plus or minus square root of minus one. And then in that junior secondary school, you were told this was impossible to solve. But then you get to the university like year one and you begin to talk about complex numbers. And on that complex numbers, anytime you had to deal with x equals plus or minus square root of minus one, you are told that that would be plus or minus i, or some people will call it plus or minus j, depending on who I, who you are talking to. If you're talking to electrical people, they, they use j. If you talk about to other people like physicists and mathematicians, they use i. And i simply represent the square root of minus one. So that's basically what this whole idea is about. So as you advance, things that, that were impossible become possible step by step. So here you have... Uh, you want to address mathematical problems like com complex numbers address mathematical problems without real solutions so x squared minus one equals zero had real solutions plus or minus one but then x squared plus one equals zero does not have real solutions so that's where complex number has to, numbers have to step in 
to help us take care of that. So they extend the number system to include solutions to equations like x squared plus one equals zero. That's why we need to talk about complex numbers. And I've already told you stylishly that, um, you know, square root of minus one is equal to I, if you're talking to mathematicians or physicists, or it is J, if you're talking to electrical people who use I for current, all right? So, and that is going to tell, uh, the next slide is going to uh, elaborate more, on, elaborate on this, right? So you have, um, Introduction to the imaginary unit, right? You have been told already that an imaginary number is made up of A plus B, I. So where A is the real part, B is the imaginary part, while I is the imaginary unit, okay? So the imaginary unit, I, is defined as square root of minus one, allowing us to define numbers beyond real numbers. So with this now, you can... Take care of numbers that are not real numbers. So combined with real numbers, it forms complex numbers. It forms complex numbers. And that's why now you can talk about x squared uh, plus 4 equals 0. And then you get something like x squared equals minus 4. And then that is x equals plus or minus square root of minus 4. And then that's the same thing as plus or minus square root of uh, 4 times square root of minus 1, all right? Because, of course, uh, if you want to go step by step, Minus 4 is the same thing as 4 times minus 1. So that's plus or minus square root of 4 times square root of minus 1 from the rules of sort. And this, the square root of 4 is 2. So you have plus or minus 2. And square root of minus 1 now is i. So you see the square root. So x squared, the solution to x squared plus 4 equals 0 is plus or minus 2i. Not forgetting that i is actually the square root of minus one. So the imaginary unit is the square root of minus one, which is represented by I. So going forward, you may not see square root of minus one anymore. You just see I. And then don't you forget that that I is the is what is called the imaginary unit. Okay. So what are some real life examples, some real life applications of uh, complex numbers, right? I've told you about uh, I already, in, uh, uh, you know, J being used for square root of minus one in electrical engineering. But then beyond that, in electrical engineering, complex numbers can be used to represent impedance in circuits. Impedance is more is some kind of resistance to in, in a circuit, right? So uh so you have complex numbers used to represent impedance in circuits. Then of course in signal processing. In signal processing, when you talk about all these transforms like Fourier transform. Z transform, all this kind of transform. So complex numbers represent signals with amplitude and phase components, you know, and they also have co quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics, complex numbers represent wave functions of particles in quantum mechanics. And in fluid dynamics, complex numbers represent fluid flow and pressure fields. So as we go on, uh, we probably we'll encounter some of, encounter some of these uh, real applications. So in conclusion, complex numbers are essential in various fields of science and in engineering, various fields of science and engineering, allowing us to solve problems beyond the scope of real numbers. And that's why you see it a lot in physics. You see it in physics, you see it in mathematics, uh, you know, you see it in math, and you see it in engineering. Engineering, like electrical, like, uh, you know, uh, water engineering or fluid dynamics and things like that. Thank you so much for listening to this video. Um, see you in the next one. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can... Uh, follow this course through and then maybe also go through other ones and make sure you hit the no notification bell so you always get alerted when a new video is released thank you so much for listening